It's um, just about four o'clock or maybe a touch past four. Today, uh, it's really hot out. It's been mostly sunny today, but rainy season is coming. And so it's really humid. There's kind of a haze in the sky. Um, uh, they'd burn off a lot of their fields too. So there's a lot of smoke hanging around too. Anyhow, I was surprised. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's four. So our, our, our generation is dropping off. We're already down to 330 Watts. Um, another half hour, that'll be down to like nothing, uh, as the sun is setting. We only hit 84%. Um, still just the internal battery. Another update. <clears throat> so I just have this 12 volt battery out of the car. I'm using, can you see that in the dark? Yeah, I'm using booster cables to grab that 12 volt accessory. This is what comes with the, uh, this is what comes with the Pectron, Pe Pectron. And so this barrel connector fits here in this DC input. Uh, can you see the numbers? So it's 12 to 18 volt. Uh, it says 100 watt max. And so by just plugging the battery directly into that, um, it draws, it'll get, it's, it's, an M, it, it's an MPPT controller, I think, um, but it's a, it's a booster. I think it just kicks the DC volts up to probably 32 or something and pumps it into the MPPT of the solar. Anyway, it, it tends to draw about 70 or 80 watts uh, according to the display. Um, so instead of running the generator first thing in the morning sometimes when we might need to, I just plug that in straight for, excuse me, an hour or two um, just to get us till the sun comes up. And then what I would do is unplug the barrel connector as an input, and then I use this cheap little Chinese battery charger, and I just plug that in. And uh, so when the sun is up and we're and we're generating a reasonable amount of power, it uh, it charges the the battery back up. Uh, very inefficient, very wasteful. That's our water pump just kicked on. It was exciting when we got that. Anyhow, something else I did uh, that I saw other people on the internet asking about. This is quite a mess here. So I also have, maybe I never explained this, this is two of the AC chargers. I have an extension cord runs out to where the generator is. So when we run the generator, I swap out the, um, whatever these are called. So these two come from the, from the AC units. And then these two come from the solar panels. So after the sun has gone down, if we watch a movie on the projector or something and need need to recharge, I, I swap those and run the generator. So these Pecron E2000 LFPs, let's see if we can see all this in the dark here okay. Um, this port is an expansion port for their proprietary battery. Uh, there's two fuses here. I believe they're 30 amps a piece. But in here, there's quite there's a bunch of pins. I think there's four or seven or I don't know. There's a bunch across the bottom. There's one high, but then there's two main pins here. I grabbed me old meter here, and um, I just happen to have these leads. Four millimeter barrel connector. Two alligator clips. And they fit perfectly. These are, so it's, if I remember, no, it's negative then positive when you're going left to right. Not that it really matters for what I'm doing. So if I plug those in with just the four millimeter barrel connectors. Get my negative lead hooked up here. A mess of wires everywhere. Don't touch those together. Okay. So we're at, let me read that, 
26.6 volts. I monitored this for a whole evening once as we were watching a movie and drained this right down. Um, if I push the DC button, it'll give me a voltage reading. Now these have never agreed, but I'm gonna go off of the uh, blue point, very expensive digital meter over what they've got in this system. But essentially from watching the voltages on these leads, I'm pretty sure that those two main four millimeter bullet connectors are simply paralleled to the LifePo 4 battery internally. And so if you got an external 24 volt LifePo 4 uh, like rack mount battery, um, I'm pretty sure you could just parallel that straight in. Um, and so their expansion battery uh, can't remember. I think it's about three kilowatts, uh, and it's about fifteen hundred dollars. But I think some of the other Chinese brand LiPo four rack mount batteries, you can get five Ks for about fifteen hundred dollars, uh, depending on where you are and shipping and all that crap. Um, but a non-proprietary Picron. LifePo 4 24 volt 5k expansion or well just battery is about the same price as their 3k expansion battery and then something else uh look on youtube but if you push these two buttons together and then tap the ac button when this battery thing flashes it gets you into a like a settings menu where you can set the capacity of your total battery to anything you want uh, but I believe all that actually does is it won't change anything for charging wise. Let's put that back where it was. Um, just this percentage. It, it calculates that percentage differently. At the same time, I don't know how that would make a difference um, because if they're watching the, the actual voltage of your pack, in order to tell you how much it's full or empty, um, they're gonna be looking at the voltage anyway, uh, which will be steady with your parallel battery pack. So unless there's some kind of a fast charge, slow charge based on current draw and current in algorithms, I don't know that it could possibly matter, but maybe it does, it's there for a reason. Anyhow, still mostly happy with the setup. Um, we definitely need more batteries. And as we move into rainy season, we could probably use a few more solar panels. I'm not sure if I'm going to do either of those and just go straight for a new solar system. Just a quick follow-up to what I was talking about <clears throat> using just a 12 volt. Um, this is not a deep cycle battery, um, but it should be. My deep cycle battery is actually in the car because I was using the car to charge it from our old temporary power solution. Anyway, that aside, what I was saying was I use the barrel connector and plug it into the 12 volt power source on the Pecron just as a little kind of emergency booster, whatever. And then later in the day after the sun comes up, just use this battery charger plug it into the AC and charge the battery back up, which literally takes the entire day because this thing only puts out seven and a half amps max. It's a very small, I don't think it shows the wattage on there. Hundred and forty watt charger. <clears throat> anyway, I have another idea. Since what I showed in the previous video, the battery ex expansion here, the two four millimeter barrel connectors are basically a parallel to the battery inside, which I, I think they are. I, I don't see why they wouldn't be. But I have this hobby charger, iCharger 3010B. So this will do a thousand watts. And it's also smart. <clears throat> Whereas if I just plug the barrel connector in here, which I did one night, I just left it all night and I discharged my non deep discharge 
lead acid battery down to like 11.8 volts or something. Like it was, it's damaged for sure because I just left it all night and there's no, there's no charge protection or discharge protection with that connection. It's just 12 volts and it'll just keep taking power till there's none left. But I can take my hobby charger here and just put the alligator clips on the battery or those are four millimeter bullet connectors. So I could put those in the end. Um, but either way, this is this would be the, the source power. And then out the other side, again, four millimeter bullet connectors. That's where my other leads came from was this charger. Um, so either way, I, what I could do is I could take this battery and go 12 volts in. And then I just program this for a four cell LifePo 4 battery and plug it into the parallel and it would just charge the battery directly. It may or may not, no, it shouldn't piss off the circuitry in this because uh, that's how the expansion batteries work. They have their own solar input. But anyway, so as an expansion, I could take a 12 volt battery, maybe even get an inexpensive uh like for only, I think it's 160 or 180 bucks, I can get uh, the Trojan solar lead acid batteries. Uh, I think they're 100 amp hour, 12 volt. I could even get two of them and use them in 24 volt. Um, but it would be an inexpensive way to use my lead acid. And then that, the lead acid could charge the battery in this in the times when I need it via my charger. And then during the day, I could just flip, basically turn it around and plug my the input back from the battery and then the output to my lead acid and charge it back up so that it's ready for the next time. Um, it's a manual process. Uh, turning this around and setting the settings uh, to LiPo4 and back to lead acid is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, but I could do it, and it would give me protection on both sides, both batteries. Um, you wouldn't overcharge or over discharge either of them because you can. This one you can set um, what the power source is and like a minimum voltage input and whatever. So you could set that source from for lead, lead acid, so that you could be. I could leave this overnight, and it would be charging the battery off of my lead acid. Um, but only down to a safe limit, so 50% of the capacity. I can't remember what the voltage would be, 12.8 12 or something. Um, on well, the, the Trojan batteries tell you exactly what voltage you can go down to for 50%. Um, and then that way, instead of running the generator at night when I go to bed, because I know we won't make it through the night, I could just use my reserve lead acid battery and just charge the LiPo internally. The other thing I thought of was just setting up 24 volts of lead acid and paralleling it in. Um, the quote unquote float voltage of this, when we hit 100% on here, um, it's 12.7 volts, which is perfect for two Trojan uh, lead acid batteries uh, for their float voltage. Um, that would take a long time to get the lead, the lead acid up to full charge. I'm not really concerned about that. What I would be concerned about is that when this hits 100% and say my Trojan lead acids would be 100%, would the Trojans, even though they're full, be wasting my battery at the float voltage? Float voltage. Um, since if you disconnected them from a charger, they would actually drop down to, I can't remember what the voltage is, just about 13 volts. Um, each, anyway, sorry, I keep talking between 12 and 24 volts because we're dealing with 24 volts and, and I'm thinking in 12, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But that was a thought, I don't know if that would waste power or not, because the life pose, when they're full, they rest at pretty close to 20. Well, you can see it right now. Not that this is correct. Um, what percentage are we at? We're at 84%. 
Um, when they're fully charged, I think they sit at 27.3. Um, this reads like 27, but the, the multimeter connected directly to the battery through the expansion port reads 27 point something. I don't remember what, but it's exactly what the float voltage for two Trojan lead acid batteries in series would be. And so I'm wondering, like, if, if it was sitting idle like that with the lead acids hooked up to the LIFEPO, would, would the LIFEPOs be draining down, floating the lead acid? And if they would, and I think they would, that would be dumb. Um, and you'd want a controller on the lead acid to sort of like disconnect them when they hit 100% and then reconnect them when the LIFEPOs get down to... Um, it's when they get down to about 20 to 30% state of charge, the voltage is low enough that the lead acids would kick in and start supplementing, which is kind of what you'd want. You'd be cycling your life bow all the time. And then the lead acid is like a backup because you only get like 300 cycles out of lead acid versus about 6,000 out of your life bow. Anyway, this whole setup is temporary anyway. I don't really want to throw a lot more money at it. And I'm not going to be able to find controllers and things in the country here. Um, we just you just don't get stuff here. I can I could get things off AliExpress or whatever, but I got to get it shipped to the U.S. Hope it goes in without any duties there, and then I'm like 20 bucks to get it brought here. So that's just that's the way it is. My my place. Um, but yeah, if I want to get away from doing the barrel connector and then unplug it and plug in the charger, which is really quite simple. Um, it works, but if I want like rundown protection on my, on my, uh, battery, I can put it through this charger, which is going to have its own current draw as well. Um, but I could, I could leave it overnight and not worry about it because it would just stop charging once the the lead acid gets down to a certain voltage anyway that's that's my update that's my rambles ramble ramble ramble